The second day, the younger brother brought his sister, who had been dressed up, to the mansion. Before entering, they went over their lines again, confirming their personas. Only then did the sister ring the doorbell. And like her modest brother, this time the sister adopted an arrogant demeanor, clearly indicating she had her own teaching methods. The lady of the house wanted to observe the first lesson, but was sternly refused by the sister. Far from being angry, the lady actually admired this and asked the butler to bring water as an excuse to take a peek. Unexpectedly, the sister was firm, ordering the butler not to come in and disturb the lesson next time. Meanwhile, the brother was also tutoring his sister. Before starting the lesson, they took the opportunity to share a deep kiss, indicating that there was no hope for the classmates. The two had already become involved. At that moment, the sister shared a secret with her brother, revealing that his mischievous behavior was all an act, even feigning his talent in painting. The brother always tried to appear like an extraordinary genius to gain the attention of their family. It must be said that the younger sister's authoritative teaching demeanor thoroughly intimidated the lady of the house. Seeing her son suddenly become well-behaved, the lady was utterly convinced. Then, the younger sister took out a painting done by the brother and, pointing to a shadow in the lower right corner, asked the lady if her younger son had ever experienced any psychological trauma. The lady was immediately astonished, her mouth agape, thinking to herself that this teacher really had a knack for this it was clear to see. Coincidentally, the shadows were also present in the lower right corner of the brother's other paintings, which made the lady even more convinced of the teacher's expertise. Leveraging the psychological terms she had recently learned, the younger sister left the lady of the house completely astounded. She explained that the shadow in the painting reflected the younger son's psychological issues. She made it clear that her purpose was not only to teach painting but also to use it as a means to treat the brother's psychological shadows. Upon learning of her treatment approach, the lady was very impressed and quickly offered her a high salary. As the club president returned home, the lad immediately embraced him and introduced the new painting teacher for their younger son. The president, sh showing little interest, casually instructed the driver to take the younger sister home. The young driver was very enthusiastic and insisted on taking her all the way to her doorstep. Given her persona as a student from a prestigious university, she obviously could not return to a slum, her actual residence. Therefore, she insisted the driver drop her off at the subway entrance. Just before getting out of the car, the younger sister, in a moment of cunning, quietly took off her underwear and left it in the car, hinting at some plan she might have for the future. The club president soon discovered the younger sister's underwear in the car and couldn't help but start suspecting his driver. Upon returning home, he shared the incident with his wife. They both speculated that the driver must have been up to no good in the car. Attributing this behavior to the driver's youth and the assumption that young people seek thrills. Hence why they would engage in such activities as car sex. They guessed that the reason for leaving behind a pair of underwear was probably because the driver's partner was overly excited. The lady admired her husband's deduction, and after discussing it, they decided to find an excuse to dismiss the driver. All this was overheard by the younger sister, and folding exactly as she had planned. Her goal was to secure a good job for her father, who had extensive experience as a designated driver and was familiar with driving various types of vehicles, making him more than qualified to become the club president's driver. The following day, the younger sister casually mentioned the driver's situation to the lady of the house. Upon hearing how insistently the driver had wanted to take her right to her doorstep, the lady couldn't help but feel apprehensive, reinforcing her belief that the driver was indeed behaving inappropriately. This led her to the conclusion that she needed to find a suitable replacement for the driver. Pretending it was just an offhand comment, the younger sister mentioned that her uncle had an experienced driver who had been with the family for decades. However, with her uncle's family planning to emigrate, this driver would soon be out of a job. In this smooth and natural way, she recommended her own father for the position. The lady of the house, pleased with a recommendation coming from someone she was familiar with, was very happy and agreed to recommend him to the club president, to ensure their father would pass the club president's assessment. 
The younger brother took their dad to test drive a car of the same model as the president's. Afterwards, their father dressed in formal attire and went to the president's company for an interview. The sight of the spacious and bright office was overwhelming for someone who lived in a semi-basement, filling the father with a mix of emotions as he waited anxiously for the president. Although the president mentioned that this wasn't an official assessment, he was holding a cup of coffee as a subtle test. The father's skilled driving and his complimentary words greatly pleased the president. The fact that not a drop of coffee spilled when the car turned impressed the president enough to be satisfied with the father's driving skills, leading to his decision to keep him on. With three out of four family members successfully employed, they decided to bring the family together by making a tough decision to dismiss the female housekeeper who had served three generations of their family. This would naturally create an opening for their mother. However, the lady of the house and her family greatly trusted this housekeeper and were very satisfied with her work. Coincidentally, during one of the tutoring sessions, the younger brother heard his sister mention that her favorite fruit was peaches, which were never available at home because the housekeeper was allergic to the fuzz on peaches. This situation presented a perfect opportunity for them, akin to the saying like finding a pillow when drowsy. Indicating a solution had serendipitously presented itself to achieve their goal. The next day, the younger sister bought some peaches. The younger brother then scraped off the fuzz from the peaches and placed it inside a pin cap, discreetly sprinkling it on the housekeeper as they left. As expected, the housekeeper had an allergic reaction. She was puzzled during her hospital visit, wondering how she could have such a severe cough when there were no peaches at home. Meanwhile, the father pretended to take a photo of the housekeeper at the hospital casually and showed it to the lady while shopping, claiming he wasn't trying to gossip but had overheard the housekeeper saying on the phone that she had tuberculosis. Initially skeptical, the lady became worried after the father exaggerated the prevalence of tuberculosis in Korea, mentioning the risk of contagion, especially with two children at home. The father sent a message to the younger sister, who once again discreetly sprinkled peach foes on the housekeeper. When the lady and the father returned home, they saw the housekeeper coughing violently. The father then picked up a tissue the housekeeper had just used, secretly applying ketchup to it behind the lady's back, making it seem as if the housekeeper was coughing up blood. The lady fainted from shock, and afterward, she found an excuse to dismiss the housekeeper. However, the absence of a housekeeper proved inconvenient for the household. Coincidentally, the club president expressed his satisfaction with the housekeeper's efficiency and how she matched his preferences. Noting her only fault was eating more, often consuming food for two. With her gone, no one was there to cook the meals he desired, especially since his wife never involved herself in such tasks. The father, feeling comfortable enough, inquired as if he were a friend, asking if the president still loved his wife despite these shortcomings. The president felt uncomfortable with his private feelings being probed, but didn't show it, secretly taking note of the father's behavior. Then, the father timely presented a business card, boasting about a private housekeeping service company exclusive to VIP clients. The simplicity and elegance of the card half convinced the president. Soon, the lady called the number, unaware that the person answering was their son's painting teacher, merely altering her voice. The younger sister, acting very arrogantly, instructed the lady to prepare extensive documentation, which reassured her of the professionalism. In this manner, the mother came to work in the house under the guise of a housekeeper. The family of four was now fully parasitic in this household, working and interacting with each other.